Hello everyone, in today's video I'll help you decide your next book to read. If you want to learn more about design, to either become a designer, start your business, or just for curiosity, this is the video for you. Now, I'll cover the all-time three most important books about design, in my opinion. The number three of this list is Don't Make Me Think by Steve Crud. Well, this is always among the books I recommend to designers and also non-designers that are willing to add some more skills around usability, on how to access their designs, and how people think, and how people usually behave in front of websites, mobile apps, and so on. It is a really easy to read book without tons of design specific terms. If you've never heard anything about design, this is the book you will fully understand because it uses only everyday popular vocabulary. It was originally published in the early 2000s and it was updated in 2014. It is available in paper or in digital version like Kindle, for example, and I definitely recommend you to buy this book today. I created this link for you to make it easier for you to find all the books listed in this video. Let's talk a little bit more about the content inside the book. It has one whole chapter talking about accessibility and design, an entire chapter about usability testing, and also some tips and tricks on how to prepare, plan, and run it like a pro. And the best part, with little to none budget. It has basically the most important foundations of usability and how people really use the web. It will teach you on how to explore the right content and omit what's not important, and even an entire chapter on how to deal with your boss asking around. It has translations in several languages, and I'll also have links for this here, so Portuguese and French, for example. And yeah, a good book review should have pros and cons, right? Basically, everything I told so far is pretty positive, but to summarize, we have it is easy to read and also understand, it is fast to read, it is pretty legit on usability foundations for mobile and desktop. Um, it is available in several languages and formats. It is cheap. I found a price range between $5 to $12 on Amazon, so pretty affordable. And it is only scratching the surface of design and usability. The cons of this book, uh, or the stuff I don't like too much, are the examples and the design trends listed. Uh, the foundations of good design of our good usability and how to test it with humans haven't changed in the last years. However, the design trend, design conventions did change a whole lot, which is normal because years have passed. So my take on that would be don't rely too much on the design trends or the good examples on the book, but in the case you do, use the rest of the content of the book to test it and assess if it's really serving your users. Also, it is only scratching the surface of design usability, so at the same time, this is a pro, this is also a con, but it's a perfect transition for the book number two, uh, of this list that will be Design of Everyday Things by Don Marmon. This is by far the book I've most, I have recommended the most throughout my whole career. It was the second book I read back in 2005 when I started to care more about how my designs would be used by the targeted audience and not just about how it would be evaluated by my creative director. <laughs> so I started to put in practice some concepts on some freelance work that I was doing and fast forward a couple of months and I got my first job as UX visual designer and my life started to change for me. By the way, if you want to know more about how I got into UX and agility and my like career path, please let me know in the comments. I would love to talk about it. Well, Don Armand is not only solid, a legit, and a remarkable benchmark when the matter is design and user experience. He's the one that gave the name to user experience back in the 90s. Lots of respect for this guy. The book was originally published back in 88, 1988 and received an important and relevant update in 2018. While I highly recommend both books, uh, you can start with the latest version and after, just for the sake of curiosity and history, read the first one. Uh, it has the physical and the Kindle version, but also has an audiobook form. It comes with a PDF file, so you can take a look on the visual examples mentioned in the book. Uh, the Design of Everything Things will cover every fundamental principle about meaningful design. It will talk about human cognition and emotion, the seven stages of actions and levels of processing, uh, behavior, reflective and vitreal, the paradox of technology, the foundations of interaction design, the difference between the two types of errors, mistake and slips, and also how to classify them. It has real examples from all over the world on how design caused unprecedented tragedies and also how we tend to wrongly apply blame to humans instead of, instead of finding the root cause of the problem, usually a design problem. Uh, also, how good design literally saved lives within the recent history and unfortunately, and how dangerous bad design can be. It goes as deep as you can on all aspects of design in several areas, from industrial design to digital design. 
It describes precisely how our memory is structured to start, and to start and replace information. And I love the chapter talking about knowledge in the world versus knowledge in our heads, and how to employ constraints, affordances, signifiers, and conventions. It has a whole chapter around Zen thinking and how Zen works in the business world. And I mean, I could spend the entire video talking about this book. Again, so far only positive stuff. So to summarize, I'd say this book is complete and has everything you need to know about design. It doesn't matter what you're designing actually. It has several examples to explain some really complex topics and it is available in several forms, physical, digital, and audio. I found the pricing range between $7 to 20 and it grabs your attention as a Netflix series. At least you got mine. Indeed, it has complex terms, but they are understandable. And also, I would say that is the Bible of design. For the language, it has versions in French, Portuguese, and English. And also, the links are here and also in the description as well, okay? The cons of the book, honestly, I didn't find it on. So, moving on to the last book of this video, it will be Linear X by Jeff Gotthelf and Josh Sale. I think this book is the most complete book when talking about UX and Agile, with some concrete uh, tools on how to do it. And also, this is one of the books that is structured the way UX should be addressed in Agile teams. I mean, I've been working with Agile teams since 2008, and back in 2013, when the first version was published, this book put some structure on the way I was working and helped me to organize my thoughts and added a layer of lucidity or clarity in the way I was addressing UX design and research work inside Agile. It has awesome content scenes on how to frame problems and use the assumptions you have to create some hypotheses and validate some solutions until the important shifts you have to face in your organization in order to apply the UX. It has a pretty solid set of tools for you to apply inside a Scrum team or an Agile team, where usually designers are complaining that it has no space for UX. Well, this book will definitely cl clarify on how to solve this issue. It starts with the principles of UX, principles to guide a team culture, organization, and process. It highlights the importance of driving vision with outcomes, using the right words, relying strongly on the learning cycle that starts with outcomes, assumptions, and hypotheses goes to design, to create our MVP, to then apply some research and learning. There are dedicated chapters detailing each phase of the process, which create use cases and tools that you should use, like for example the new X canvas, the proto-persona, the hypothesis statement, and the business assumptions exercise and so on. It also explains the importance of the prototype and when and how to increase the fidelity of the prototype. So you don't waste time and effort on what has still a high level of uncertainty and how to use all of this within the life cycle of the product or service you are working on. It has one whole chapter also on collaborative design, talking about design studios and how to run it, the value behind such a popular thing today, which is that is the design systems. Another book that I could spend more than an entire video talking about, but I'll save you the spoilers so you can go ahead and read it because it works every single page. It has version in Portuguese and French and is available in Physic uh, and Kindle format. Didn't find though audible versions for our, our audiobooks. And to summarize the pros of this book, uh, it is pretty affordable as well. The price range I found when I was making this video was from six up to twenty dollars. It is really easy to read and understand and uh, it's really well structured. Uh, whatever you learn here you will be able to apply literally on the next day. It puts design as an important artifact, not just to create great experiences, but also to impact on what's important for the business. So this would be definitely a book I would buy today. The cons of this book, well, the cons of this book, mm, to be honest, again, no. Uh, I mean, after reading it, please leave the comment down below in the comment section. And yeah, that's pretty much it for today. And if you enjoyed that, please hit the subscribe button. And yeah, see you on the next video. Now. Not gonna do the, the, the head thing today, but what if maybe something like this? Uh...